What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're going to be making a sci-fi drone, so let's just get started. Alright, so to start things off we're going to select a sphere and we can start blocking out that main centerpiece of my drone. I thought it would be really easy to start off with this shape and then we can kind of model everything else around it. Now for my reference I was following a really great piece of art from an artist named Kartsten Stuben and he created a drone and I really liked what he did. I didn't want to copy it exactly piece for piece, but I thought I would take a lot of the inspiration and carry it over into my own model. One of the things I really liked about his model were these side vents. They were kind of like these little propellers that would spin and they were inside of the sphere. And they weren't directly on the side, they were kind of on an angle downwards. So to do that we're just going to create a sphere and I can rotate that sideways and slightly downwards so I can take advantage of all those little faces that are in a spiral and I can just delete them to create that little cutout where I want that propeller or those little blades to go. Now I'm just working on one side to make my life easier so once that one cutout is created I can use a multi-cut tool to create one cut directly down the middle and then I can just chop it right in half. Alright, so now that we have half our sphere, if we just duplicate this over and attach it, all of our topology is going to look a little bit messy. So we're going to go up to Mesh and go Retopologize. We're just going to make sure that our target face count is quite low. I just want to work in a lot of low polys right now. And then when I hit 3 on my keyboard, we can always smooth it out and increase subdivisions later on. Alright, so now that I have a sphere that's clean in topology and it has a little cutout on the side, I can go ahead and create another one, just duplicate another one over and then I can just re-merge those two edges back together. Alright, so next up we're just creating a little cutout on the back where the exhaust is going to go. We're going to do the exact same thing we basically did for the side little propeller vents. We're just going to delete a bunch of these faces on the back. I can double click that edge and use that circularized tool. I can turn that into a nice circle. And then really quickly I'm just going to go to my modeling toolkit and change my transform constraints down to edge. That way I can play around with these vertices, they can slide around the edges, just so I can clean it up a little bit before I move on. Alright, so that main sphere shape is complete. So now we can start extruding some of these cutouts we created. So I'm going to go ahead and double click some of these edges and I can extrude them inwards and start giving those edges a small bevel. That way when I hit 3 on my keyboard, it will retain its shape and it will give those edges a nice hard edge. Alright, so next up is creating our next piece of metal, basically that front face of my drone. And we're going to do that the exact same way we created this sphere, we're going to create another one. I'm just going to rotate that to fit directly in front of the sphere we just created and I can just chop that in half and start playing around with the shape until I find something that I'm happy with. And just like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wasn't copying the model exactly so I was experimenting along the way, I was just using it more or less for inspiration and I did end up copying a lot of the ideas since I really liked his model but I was just playing around with the shape a little bit. So what I'm doing here is focusing on just one side rather than building out the whole model. I can just focus on one side. It just helps me visualize the shape and play with things. Then once I'm happy with it, I can just chop it in half and mirror it over to create the other one. So that's what I'm doing with this shape. Just playing around some of these edges, extruding a few things. And once I'm happy with it, I can chop it in half to create the other side. And one thing about these sci-fi tech related models, honestly you can keep adding so many shapes and wires and screws and little details and you can go for hours and hours and even days if you really wanted to. And that's what's really challenging with this model was just picking and choosing my battles because I always try to keep these models around 2 hours in real time length. That way the YouTube videos aren't crazy long, you're not watching me model something for like 7 hours. So this model went over that 2 hour target, it was somewhere around 2.5 hours but a big reason for that was just all the experimenting and things I did along the way. All 
right, so that second shape is all blocked out and finished. We can just continue on, similar to how we're doing the other ones. I'm gonna create another sphere, scale that nice and small, delete all the faces I don't need, and then start playing around with the shape until I find something I'm happy with. And keep in mind, I'm just experimenting along the way, so I didn't exactly know how I wanted these shapes to look. So I was just playing around with a few things until I saw something that looked good to me, and then I just went ahead with it. Alright, so the front of our drone is looking good. Next up, just creating some little cutouts where we want these little eyes or glowing lights to be. So to do this, I'm just going to keep it low poly to make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to create a low poly cylinder that's just six sided. I can scale that nice and small to position that where I want to boolean out a little hole. And I'm going to do it directly in one of these faces. That way I can work with one face as a separate object. Once I'm done that boolean and I'm happy with it, I can just duplicate that same boolean cutout into other places on my model depending on where I want those little glowing lights to go. So all I'm going to do is just select that face, go mesh extract. That way I can separate that face from my model so it's its own separate piece of geometry. And then I can boolean out a hole directly into this face. That way I can keep reusing the same boolean over and over again depending on wherever I want to paste them all over my mesh. And it's really easy since it's low in poly. Once I create that boolean, I can go in with my multi-cut tool and attach all of those vertices and then give that edge a nice little bevel. Now that I have one cutout complete, I can just go ahead and delete the other faces on my model and I can start duplicating this and positioning it into those other positions depending on where I want those little cutouts to go. And all I'm doing for this is just repositioning this over the other faces that I'm removing and then using the target weld tool, I can just reattach it onto my original mesh. Now for this top little cutout, it's a little bit different than the other ones since it's not directly in the middle of a face. So I'm going to have to play around with this one a little bit more just to get that nice circle cutout into my mesh. So I should have just originally merged those vertices which are on the top and bottom edges from that boolean. You'll see soon enough I start getting some weird artifacts on that circle shape when I press 3 on my keyboard to smooth it out, and that's the reason why. I end up cleaning it up later on during the UVing process, but it's worth making a note now for people following along, just so you know. Just to save time, merge those vertices to one of those corners and the model and those faces will look much better.
All right, so now that shape is looking much better, I can go ahead and select all of the faces on it, go Control E to extrude it, and that way I can give it a little bit of thickness. And then all I have to do is just add in a few edge loops, just add some supporting edges where we created that thickness. That way when I hit three on my keyboard, I have some nice hard edges. Now because we extruded those faces and messed up those little holes we created earlier, so I'm just gonna select all of those faces, just delete them and that way I can just re-bridge them together. Alright, so that panel's looking good, and just when I zoomed out and took a look at the model, it was looking a little bit too plain, so I wanted to make a few extra cutouts. So I'm just going to play around with the shape a little bit more, just delete some of the faces and reattach a few others, just so I can give it a little bit more shape and I can get it into a state that I'm a little bit more happy with. So what I like to do when I'm creating a lot of these models and shapes, is just zoom back out and imagine it in a silhouette form. So I like to look at the outside edges and see if I can distinguish the different shapes from one another. A lot of the times if it doesn't have a really good silhouette or you couldn't really make out what your model is from looking at it at a distance, it usually needs a little bit more shape. You need to work on those forms a little more. Find if you can make a really nice silhouette, usually the model will look a lot better. So that's what I'm doing here, just zooming back out constantly, just taking a look at the model. And in this case, I wasn't really happy with how it was looking, so I wanted to make a few extra changes to the model so I can make that silhouette look a little bit better. Alright, so that shape is looking much better now, and I will continue to work on it later on when the UV in comes, but for the time being, it's good. Let's just move on to the next one. So next up was working on that piece of metal that's directly behind this panel. It's basically very similar to this one, just a different shape. So using the exact same method as we did before, I'm going to create another sphere. I can scale that nice and small, chop it in half, and start playing around with some of these edges and extruding some of them to give it a nice shape. And then once I'm happy with that, I can just extrude the whole thing to give it some thickness. So let's go ahead and start playing around with the shape so we can start working on this next panel. Now I will speed up this next little bit just because I didn't exactly know how I wanted this panel to look. So I'll just experimenting and I don't want you to have to watch the whole process of me moving vertices around. So let's just speed it up a little bit until I get it into a place that I'm happy with. Alright, so after playing around with it for a little bit, I finally got it into a position I was happy with. Now we can move on to that next panel that's directly behind this one. Now there are two of them on each side, they're basically like large ears almost, but it's just two large pieces of panels that have some little fin on top. 
Now, rather than creating both, I'm just gonna create one and then I can just duplicate that over to create the other one on the other side. So to do this, I'm gonna create a plane. I can make it really low in polys and I can start positioning this on my model, just playing around with those vertices and faces to get it into a position that I was happy with. Alright, so once I'm happy with how that shape is looking, I can select all of those faces, Control e to extrude it, and I can give it a little bit of thickness. Now even though I'm giving it a little bit of thickness, I still wasn't completely satisfied with the shape, so I continue to just adjust things a little bit more. I do enter soft select mode and start dragging and extruding some of these objects, just to make them a little bit bigger. So let's just continue playing around with the shape a little bit more until I get it into a more of a finalized state that I'm happy with, and then we can move on. So at the top of this panel, I thought it'd be cool to make a little cutout kind of like airplane wings have. They have that little other piece that can go up and down to help basically steer it to navigate it. So to do that, I'm just going to select some of those faces, extract them to separate it from the model, and I can reattach some of those edges. That way I have it my own separate object, and I can give it a nice little bevel. That way it can fit directly into where that cutout is, and it looks like it kind of belongs to that shape. Now this little piece is not going to be animated, and you're not going to have any really close-ups, so how it attaches into that little cutout is not important, and you're not going to be able to tell from the render. So I'm just going to keep it floating kind of where that cutout is, and you're not going to be able to tell how it's attached, it's just going to look like it belongs there.
Now eventually when the texturing comes, I make some nice little cuts and some indents into the metal that's directly into the texture. But I thought it'd be also fun just to kind of create some in the geometry itself. So I'm just going to select a bunch of these faces, extrude them inwards, so that way I can have a nice little line indent that's directly into this panel. Alright, so I'm going to continue working on this, but just for now, I'm just going to duplicate another one over to the other side, so I can start visualizing how this whole shape and model is looking. Alright, so we're going to quickly jump back to one of those panels we were working on earlier, and I'm just going to extrude all of those spaces to give it a little bit of thickness. Alright, so now jumping back to that other panel we were working on, there's this little fin that basically sits directly on top. So to do that, I'm going to start off with a cube, scale that nice and small, start extruding some of those faces so I can start creating a small little fin shape. Alright, so to make the fin a little bit more interesting, to add a little bit more shape to it, I thought I would chop off the top of it so there's two separate objects that are basically making up this whole fin shape. So I'm just going to select the top part of this fin, extract it so it separates it from the model. I can then fill in those empty holes, bevel out some edges, and then I have a nice fin that's consisting of two separate pieces. This is also going to make it much easier to apply different materials so I can have the top fin a separate color than the bottom part. Alright, so next up I just want to create a little extrusion from that panel piece that basically is directly below that fin. That way it looks like the fin actually goes directly into it. So to do that, I'm just going to position this fin over top of some faces, and then I can delete those faces from that panel, and I can extrude them upwards to give it a little bit more shape. Alright, so this panel's looking much better now, but it still needs a little bit more work. I want to have a little sphere that's sitting on the side to act as some sort of light or eye that's on this drone. So to do that, I'm going to select a bunch of these faces, delete them so I can extrude up a little area where this light is going to go. Alright, so that's looking good temporarily. We're going to come back to it and continue working on it. But for now, while I zoom back out, I realized that that first panel shape I was working on was still looking a little bit too plain. So really quickly, I'm just going to create another extra little cutout, and hopefully this will add a little extra shape to it. Alright, so next up was filling in those little holes on the side of my drone. Now this is the area where I imagine would be some sort of propeller or these little fins that spin around. 
that somehow power this drone. So to do that, I'm going to create a cylinder, scale that nice and small, delete those faces on the outside so I can extrude them inwards and reattach them, basically creating some little ring shape. And then I can scale that nice and small to fit into that cutout. Once that's positioned in there, I can duplicate that same shape and scale that a little bit smaller to create another one. That way I have a little area where I can fit in these little fins. Then creating a cube, I can scale that really small to fit in between those two cylinders and then duplicate it a bunch of times so it spins all the way around. And this is sort of like that shape, that propeller shape I was talking about. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the spacing of all those little fins. I can always come back when I start doing the UVing just to clean it up and touch it up a little bit more. But for now, I just want to get all these shapes into their positions. Alright, so now that we have that fan propeller shape complete, now I just need to create some sort of object that attaches it onto that front panel piece. So to do that, I'm just going to create a cube, scale that nice and small, and I can attach it onto that front panel. I basically just want to start creating a bunch of shapes that attach that front panel to the middle cylinder in my fan. Alright, so that propeller slash fan is looking good. Next up is just working on that little fin or arm that's directly below it. So to do that, we're going to create another cube and I can start blocking out all those shapes. I really want to keep it low and poly until I get everything positioned and then I can start beveling out some edges.
Alright, so that fin is looking good. Now let's just duplicate these shapes over to the other side so I can start seeing how this model is looking. Alright, so next up I just wanted to create some little cutouts where I wanted some lights to go. I imagine these would be some sort of eyes for the drone. So I'm just going to jump back to one of those first panel pieces I was working on. I can go select a bunch of those faces and I can hit that circularize tool to create a nice little circle on that mesh. And then all I have to do is just delete those faces, extrude that edge inwards a little bit, and then I have a nice little cutout circle shape where that eye or that little light is going to go. Alright, so really quickly before moving on to create that eye shape itself, I just want to make sure that this panel piece is looking good. That top little edge on the very top of the panel, I just want to make sure there's some nice supporting edges. So when I hit 3 on my keyboard, it really helps retain that hard edge on this shape. So let's go ahead and add a little edge loop so I can help support this edge. Alright, so next up was moving on to the light or the little eyeball shape. So I originally started off with creating a cylinder. I thought I would just delete all those faces and have a nice little circle that I can kind of fit into that cutout. But then I realized that it's not going to have much shape and it's going to look really flat. So I end up creating a little sphere and scaling that really small to fit inside of that little cutout we made. I then just start deleting some faces and extruding some edges to give it a little tech eyeball look. And once I'm happy with that little shape, I can start duplicating it to fill in all the other little boolean holes we created on the model. So let's go ahead and start finishing off this little eyeball, and then we can start pasting them all over our model.
Alright, so the drone is slowly coming together. Next up is just working on that back exhaust. So very similar to all the other shapes we created, I'm going to create another sphere, chop that in half and start positioning that right in that back cut out we made earlier. And once again, I'm just experimenting along the way, so I'm just playing around with the shapes until I find something that I'm happy with. But all I'm really doing is just extruding a bunch of edges and just keep extruding things until I find a shape that I'm happy with. Alright, so that exhaust was coming along, but it was looking a little bit too plain and I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting in shape. So I ended up going back in, deleting some faces and making some little cutouts that are around my exhaust. Now I ended up beveling out some of these edges, so when I hit 3 on my keyboard it can retain those hard edges and have a nice smooth shape, but it did need a little bit of work when it came to the topology. And usually when I'm working on a lot of these videos and a lot of these models for my YouTube videos, I try not to worry about topology too much during the modeling process, it just really drags out the modeling video and it just saves me a lot of time on my upload rather than having a really long lengthy video. I usually tend to do all the cleaning up with the topology and stuff during the UV process. So I don't worry about getting everything too perfect right off the bat. I just want to get these shapes in a relatively final state and then I can always come back to it when the UVs come just to clean it up a little bit more. So let's go ahead and just wrap up this exhaust and then we can move on to some other shapes. Alright, so that rear engine exhaust piece is wrapped up and it's looking good for now. We can always come back like I mentioned and polish it up later on during the UVing. But I just want to move on to a few other things. So next up were those little exhaust pieces that are right on the top. They're basically like little cubes and I imagine they're little exhausts, but they sit directly underneath those little wings or those ears we have on this drone. So let's go ahead and create a little cube and we can start blocking those shapes out. Alright, so next up is creating some little wings or some little fins that are on the side. So all I'm going to do is just take that original fin we created on the top, I can just duplicate that shape over, scale it up a little bit and start positioning that on the side of my drone.
All right, so I wanted to create a little bit of extra shape on this fin, so all I do is duplicate it, highlight all of those faces that are on the very end of it near where it attaches onto the drone, and I just extract it from the model. So basically I delete the other one so I have a nice little strip of all these faces. And then all I have to do is just scale the shape up a little bit so it's not sitting directly on the same faces. And then I can just extrude the edge so it gives it a little bit of a bump, like there's a little extra metal piece that's on the end of the fin. And this is also going to come in handy when we come to texturing so I can apply a different color or material to this piece of metal. Alright, so next up is creating the legs. Now this was pretty easy, it was basically one shape that duplicated a bunch of times down the whole leg. So I thought it would just make sense to create that one simple shape. We can go ahead and UV it ahead of time so it's already done and then we can duplicate them all to create all the other ones. So to do this, I'm just going to create a cylinder and we can start blocking out how I want that shape to look. Now I created a smaller little cylinder on the bottom, that way when I start layering them onto each other there's a little cylinder that's going to sit in between the two larger cylinder pieces. And hopefully when I start just duplicating this a bunch of times, it just looks like they all layer on top of each other correctly. So let's just experiment with the shape a little bit until we find something that we're happy with. And like I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and UV this ahead of time, since there's going to be so many of these little cylinders on this leg piece, it's going to be a lot of extra work to have to redo if I don't do it ahead of time. So let's just go ahead and UV this now. And all I really do for this is just a planar projection to remove all the cuts, and using that 3D cut and sew tool I'll just create my own cuts on the model where I need them, and then lay them out on my UV map. And then really quickly I'm just going to duplicate it a few times just to make sure that they layer on top of each other correctly and it looks nice when I start duplicating it. And once I'm happy with the shape I can go ahead and just wrap up the rest of these UVs. Once those UVs are finished, I can go ahead and quickly combine all of these objects together so I have one mesh. So that little shape is complete, so now I can go ahead and create an EP curve tool so I can start drawing out some points depending on how I want that leg shape to look. I decided I was going to use the mash tool so I can extrude this little shape along that curve. So depending on how your curve is going to look, that's basically going to be the whole shape of my leg. So once I rotate that object, I can go to my mash tab and create a mash network. Then I just need to go add a curve node, middle click and drag that EP curve tool we created earlier and drag and drop it into my input curves. Then I just have to go to my mash distribute tab and change that drop down from linear to initial state. Once I do that I just need to increase my number of points and increase the step slider value depending on how many of these objects I like to have and make sure that they line up correctly to one another. Now the first shape was a little bit too small, so the line was looking a little bit too thin once I increase that step value. So I just control Z it all to enlarge that original first shape, and then I just redo my mash tool to create the drone leg. So let's go ahead and just redo all of those steps, and I can create the first drone leg. And looking back now, rather than redoing everything, I could have just easily went edit mesh transform, and I could have just changed the scale of the shape. Alright, so once I'm happy with that shape, I can just go delete the history, freeze transformations, and center pivot, and then I can take this whole shape, rotate it, and start positioning it right underneath my drone. Now my leg was looking a little bit too straight, so rather than going back and redoing my curve, and redoing all those mash steps, I thought I would just enter a soft select mode and I can just manually adjust the size, depending on how much of a curve I want. 
Now you have to be careful with the soft select brush because if I just start drastically moving all these polys around, it can really warp the shape and things can really quickly start looking incorrect. So I just don't want to go too crazy, but I definitely want to give it a little bit more of a curved shape to the leg, like it flows a little bit as if it was flying through the air. And also the leg was looking a little bit too long, so I also just end up removing a few of the extra pieces on the bottom. Alright, so once that first leg is all wrapped up, I can go ahead and duplicate the same object and slide it over to create the second one. Now I don't want them looking identical in shape, so using that soft select brush once again, I'm just going to slightly alter it so it looks a little bit different than the other one. Alright, so next up is creating a little object that helps attach those legs onto the drone. I basically just don't want the legs going directly into the drone, I want something to sit in between them both to act as if some little object that helps keep them in place. So to do that, we're going to create a little sphere, chop that in half, scale that nice and small, and I can start blocking out that little shape. Alright, so before we go ahead and duplicate these to create the other two legs on the other side, we need to create the little feet on the bottom. Now my reference image was showing some sort of claw with a light that was right in the middle. And I really like that idea. We can do some cool emissive textures to make a cool glowing light right on the bottom of the hand. So we're going to start blocking the shape out. So I'm going to start off with a cylinder. We can scale that nice and small, bubble out some edges to create the main hand shape. And then I can create one little finger that sits on the side. And then once I block that shape out, I can just duplicate that three more times. So I have four little claws that are sitting on the very bottom. So let's go ahead and start blocking these shapes out. And then we can start positioning them on the bottom of these legs. Now really quickly, I just wanted to mention with this little shape here, it just stresses me out just looking at it because of the topology and there's just it's just so messy that it needs a little bit of cleaning up. Now I do come back during the UVing process to clean the shape up, so I just wanted to make a note of that just in case anybody else is looking at this and thinking the exact same thing because it does need a little bit of love. I just haven't given it the love yet, but I do that later on. So anyways, let's get back to it so we can wrap up this hand.
All right, so once those two claws are positioned at the bottom of the legs, we can go ahead and duplicate both of these shapes over to create the other two legs on the other side. And once again, I'm just gonna use a soft select brush just to change the shape of the other two legs so they're not identical in mirroring the other side. Alright, so those legs are looking good, now I'm just going to really quickly jump back to some of the other objects we already created, just so I can start adjusting a few small things and adding a few small details. Alright, so next up is creating a little glass object that sits right over top of those front components. I basically want some nice glowing blue lights underneath, but I want some transparent little glass material to sit right over top, like some little bubble. So that's very simple, we're going to create another little sphere, chop that in half, or very small, and then start positioning that directly over top of those objects. Now just to make my life a little bit easier so I can start visualizing things, I'm going to add a transparent material to these glass objects. But later on, when we start assigning the materials for Substance Painter, I'm going to end up removing this. So this I'm just adding for the modeling process, just so I can start visualizing things a little bit easier. Alright, so there's only a few other small objects left to do and then we're done the whole modeling process. So next up is this little cube that sits directly on the bottom and that's just pretty straightforward. We're going to create a cube, scale that into position and bevel out some edges. Now I end up making a slight change to this later on. It's off camera but it's such a small detail I didn't think it was necessary to come back and re-record it. I just basically take a little face from this object and extrude it so it wraps underneath the whole belly of this drone. Alright, and once that object is in position, I can go ahead and take some of those lights we created earlier and just duplicate those down to reposition them on top of this object.
All right, so now zooming back, I noticed how it should have a little tiny fin directly in the middle. So I'm just gonna take one of those fins we created earlier, duplicate that over and I can position that directly in the middle of the other panel. And last but not least, just to add one little final detail, I thought we should add a little tiny badge that sits directly on the front. In my reference photo, there was a number that was just basically pasted directly on the front, and I thought that would be a good spot to throw on a number. So let's go ahead, create a little cube, and we can position that directly on the front face. All right, and that's it for all of the modeling. So now really quickly, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did those UVs, and then we can jump into Substance Painter and start texturing. All right, so here's the drone in its finished form once I'm done all of those UVs and I added on a few extra little objects. So on the very bottom here, like I mentioned earlier, I took that face and extruded it so it wraps around the underneath the whole belly of the drone, just to add a little extra detail. I also added these little bolts that go around the whole exhaust. And then I added these little grills, basically rather than those planes I had earlier, I just added a little cube and basically just duplicated them a bunch so I have a little grill effect. So now to go over those UVs, I ended up doing two different texture maps. Now, I originally was planning to do one, but near the end of the UVing, I decided just to split it up into two. So the first one consists of the legs and the fins. And the other one is just the whole body, the top part of the drone. Now, like I mentioned, you could easily combine this into one, but I thought since it's a higher poly model and it's only for my YouTube video, I thought I should just get a little bit more out of those textures if I split them into two different maps. Anyways, that's exactly how I did those UVs. So now let's jump into Substance so we can start texturing. All right, so now in Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in my FBX file from Maya. And I always do a quick look at the model to make sure nothing's jumping out as incorrect. But if things are looking good, you can go to your texture set settings, scroll down to Bake Mesh Maps, choose your output size, I chose 4K, and make sure to check on that Use Low Poly Mesh as High Poly Mesh. And then you can bake out your textures. Alright, so really quickly before we start texturing, there's a few small things we have to do. Since we're planning to have some emissive and transparent textures on our model, we need to go change our shader so we can allow that to happen. So we're going to go up to our top right corner to our shader settings, and we're going to switch that shader to alpha blending. That's going to allow us to add an opacity and an emissive channel to our texture. Alright, so now that our project's all set up, we can start texturing. So to start things off, we're going to work on our texture one, which is our body. So I'm going to go over to our Smart Materials tab, and I'm going to assign the Steel Bright Layered material that comes with Substance. All I have to do is open up that folder. I'm just going to remove that Bright Edges layer, and then we can go tweak some of those colors to get something that's a little closer to what I had in mind. I always find it a little bit challenging working with clean metal materials, just because it can look really unrealistic when they're really clean, and that's a big reason why I chose the Steel Bright material and Substance. It comes to a little bit of grunge, or a slight, slight dirt effects. So I don't want it looking too beaten up, but I still want it looking relatively clean and functional like it's used every day. So it's going to take a little bit of playing around with the materials to find something that I'm happy with. Speaking of dirt and grunge, it was looking a little bit too clean, so we're going to add a fill layer, I'm going to go over to my masks tab and I can drag on whatever mask effect I would like, and then I can just play around with those sliders depending on how much grunge I want to show. And like I said, I don't want it to look too beaten up and grungy, but I do want it to look functional like it's used every day. Alright, so once I'm happy with how that material is looking, I can right click that folder, set it to a black mask, and then I can just assign it to whatever meshes I want in my scene. Now I find sometimes when you're working in Substance Painter, because the resolution in the editor is so low, sometimes the textures don't look as accurate as they do in the renderer. So what I'm going to do is go over to my texture set settings, and I'm going to increase my resolution from 1K to 2K, which is going to allow me to see those little scratches and details a little bit more clear and better and it's just gonna help me visualize how these textures are coming together.
All right, so next up is finding another metal material for those other small meshes on my model. Now I wanted this to be like a dark black metal, so let's go experiment with a few of the smart materials until I find something that I'm happy with. So that steel dark material is looking good, so we can right click, set that to a black mask, and then I can assign it to whatever meshes I want to assign that steel material to. Alright, so next up is doing that glass material, and that's pretty straightforward, I just went to my smart materials tab, I chose that glass film texture that comes with Substance Painter, and I just decided to turn off the dirt layer that's in the folder, and then change that opacity slider depending on how see-through I wanted that glass to be. Now that glass was looking a little bit too clean, so we're going to go over to our textures tab. And I'm going to drag on whatever texture effect I want onto the roughness channel, and it's just going to help give that glass a little bit more realistic grunge effect on top of it. Alright, so next up is finding another metal material to assign to that mesh that's below that glass. Alright, so next up is finding a metal material for those little light meshes. Now I made sure while I was doing those UVs to do cuts directly around where I wanted those emissive materials to show. So I'm only going to assign that metal material to the outside UV space, basically just to the outside area of those lights themselves. I'm going to leave the insides untextured so I can assign a separate emissive material to those areas. And then for the emissive color itself, I'm just going to add a fill layer. I'm going to choose whatever color I would like and I'm going to make sure that emissive channel is assigned to it and then I can just change that emissive color depending on whatever color I'd like to show. Then just right click, set that to a black mask and assign it to those other UV spaces on my lights. Alright, so next up I wanted to add some nice little details into my metal material. So to do that, I'm going to start off with another fill layer. I'm going to remove all of the channels so I only have a height channel applied and I can just drag down that slider depending on how much of an imprint I want to have into this metal material. Now I was planning on making some nice little engravings into my metal, like some extra little panel work or something along those lines. So to do that, I'm going to choose a really hard edged brush. I can move that really small and I can start drawing directly onto my mesh wherever I would like to put that extra little detail. Now rather than doing my work twice, I decided to toggle on symmetry on the very top. And as you can see, the line doesn't line up correctly, so I just need to slide that X slider until the line is directly in the middle of my model. And now once I draw on this side of my panel, it'll show up on the other side, and it just saves me from redoing the work twice. And also those lines are going to be lined up correctly on both sides. Now I don't use the symmetry tool too much, actually almost never. But in this case, it just made a lot of sense to use it because I wanted that spacing to be roughly the same on both sides. And I didn't exactly know where I wanted those cuts to go, so it was a little bit of experimenting along the way. That's what I was doing here, just trying different things to see what looked good and what didn't. And once I was happy with that, I can go to my alphas tab and choose a different alpha, like some little screw, and I can start pasting on other little details onto my mesh.
All right, so next up is creating all of those little lights that are in the center of my drone. Now this was pretty straightforward. I already created that light blue emissive color that's assigned to all of my light meshes. So we're just gonna reuse that exact same layer and just assign different alphas to it depending on whatever I wanna print onto my mesh. So let's go through this alphas folder and we can just choose different alphas and we can start pasting on more lights onto my drone. So I'm just going to speed up this next little portion of the video as I'm just applying different lights and alphas to this drone. Now like I mentioned earlier, I didn't exactly know what I wanted to show so there was a lot of experimenting, playing around with different alphas and settings just to find exactly what I wanted. So that's the only reason why I'm going to speed up so you don't have to watch me mess around with these sliders the whole time. Let's go ahead and just wrap up these lights so we can have some cool lighting effects on my drone. Alright, so those lights are looking much better. Now, very similar to how we did these alphas and these lighting effects, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna do more imprints directly into the metal mesh that's around the lights. So I'm just gonna fast forward this next bit, just like we just did, and I'm gonna add an extra little bit of detail into this metal material. Alright, so texture one's looking good. It's basically done. Now we're always gonna come back and do some more tweaks and adjustments later on, but for now it's looking good. So let's jump onto our texture two so we can finish texturing those meshes. So to keep the metals and colors consistent, I'm just gonna copy over that same beige and black material that we assigned to those meshes, and I can just copy them and paste them to the other meshes on my texture two. So let's go ahead and start doing that.
All right, so now that those materials are applied, next up were the legs. Now I wanted these metals to be a little bit different than the other materials we already have applied. I wanted it to be a different kind of tone of beige, maybe a little bit more glossy, and just something that was a little bit different. So we're gonna go choose a plastic material, I'm gonna assign it to all of those meshes, and we can start tweaking some of those settings. And once again, I didn't really know the direction I was going with this, I was kind of experimenting along the way. So once again, we're gonna experiment a little bit with these legs until I find something that I'm happy with. Alright, so the textures are coming together and now I'm just going to jump into the renderer so we can take a look and see how things are looking. Alright, so next up is adding some metal details onto these side wings. So very similar to how we did the other details into the other metal materials, we're going to do the exact same thing to this one. Now lucky for me, because we copied over that same beige texture from our first texture map, it has all the other fill layers already assigned to it. So we already have that same layer that we assigned that height channel to, so we don't have to add another fill layer or anything like that. It's already inside of that folder. We're just going to go choose another hard brush so we can imprint some nice lines into that wing. All right, so next up were those feet or those little claws on my drone. So let's go ahead back to my smart materials folder. We can go assign some materials to those meshes. And then I'm gonna go back to my first texture map. I'm gonna copy over that same emissive blue color light we have, and I can paste it onto this texture map so I can assign it to that little circle we have that's in the middle of the claw. Alright, so while zooming out and taking a look at the materials, I realized I forgot to do that back exhaust on the drone on my first texture map. So before I go ahead and apply materials to that last mesh, we're going to go ahead and finish off adding some details to that metal material. I want to add some more panel lines and some little screws or other alphas into the metal material just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at since it's looking a little bit too plain. So I'm going to speed up the next little bit as I'm just experimenting with a few different things and different alphas just so I can try adding a little bit more detail onto that metal mesh.
Alright, so now it's time to do that back exhaust. So very similar to all the other objects, I'm going to go to my Smart Materials folder and choose a base material that I want to apply to that exhaust. And for that glowing inside part of the exhaust, I'm going to do that very similar to how we did those lights. I'm just going to assign another fill layer and choose that emissive color, but instead of a blue, I'm going to make it a more of an orangey yellow tone. And then I'm just going to make sure to crank up that emissive slider so it's really glowing a lot, and then I can assign it to the inside meshes of that object. Alright, and just like that, our materials are applied to our exhaust. Now really quickly, I'm just going to jump back to that metal material we were working on just before, just so I can continue experimenting and exploring with different alphas and different details I can add into that metal material. The object's still looking a little bit too plain, especially on the sides of that sphere, so I want to see if I can add something a little bit extra to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. So I'm just going to speed up the next little bit as I'm just experimenting a little bit more with a few different things. Alright, so I thought it'd be really cool to add a little caution symbol that's on the side of the drone. So to do that, I'm just going to add another fill layer. I'm going to go choose that caution symbol alpha that comes with Substance Spanner, and then I can just paste it directly on the side of my mesh. Alright, so for the rest of the video, I just continue to add a few different alphas and small details onto the model. I basically continue doing the exact same things we have been doing, but I just add a few extras. So I add a few extra small lights onto the front and a few extra small metal imprints onto that beige metal material. So let's go ahead and just continue tweaking a few things and then we can wrap up the model.
And that's basically everything. That is the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this little sci-fi drone. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. And a really big shout out to Karsten Stuben. He's the artist that really created this whole concept that I basically copied it from. So really big shout out to you for the awesome piece of art. Also, if you want to support the channel even further, as well as get access to additional content, check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Alright, thanks so much for tuning into this week's video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.